Welcome to Story Chats at Inspi Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer. Today we are talking about reality TV-based CCR. This has been a long time coming. This is another one like the fairy tale retelling episodes where it kept coming up and we're like, we should do an episode. So ta-da, we're now doing our episode on reality TV-based CCR. So um, why don't we start off by asking, do you like reality TV? Do you watch reality TV? Um, or have you gone through a phase where it was something that you watched and enjoyed? And uh, if you do watch it, do you have favorite shows that you would want to share? Valerie, we'll start with you. Well, let's start with, we haven't had cable in, <laughs> I can't remember how many years, 15, 20. Um, so no, I don't watch <laughs> This is no surprise to you. Yeah. You're laughing at me, Beth. No. Because I not only don't watch TV, I don't watch streaming and I don't watch movies. So anyway, but back in the day, I, re I remember watching Iron Chef. Does that count? That does count. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, it's been a long time. So I have not ever watched any of these current shows. Uh, definitely not from beginning to end. Iron Chef totally counts. That practically makes you a reality TV junkie, I think. Ah. Practically. Practically. Narelle, what about you? Um, I don't intentionally watch reality TV. I have watched some. So I remember I've watched at least one season of Big Brother. Did you have that in the States? Yeah, we have Big Brother. Where you, yeah, Big Brother. Mm -hmm. um, I like MasterChef. I remember meeting Julie Goodwin at a book signing oh, where I worked. That was fun. She was the first winner of MasterChef here. Um, I've watched the renovation shows where they have to um, renovate an apartment and sell it I can't think of the names off the top of my head now um, so I found those interesting in terms of looking at interior design and stuff like that and I've watched for a while <laughs> I've watched a couple of episodes of The Bachelor and dating tv shows I've watched some of the early seasons of Married at First Sight but I'm really I will admit I just won't watch the dating the dating shows now I think that for a whole bunch of reasons yeah. they're just not my favorite they're not my thing not my cookie <laughs> I am not a fan of the dating tv shows either um I do like the cooking competitions like mm -hmm. top chef master chef um I like the great british bake-off yeah, great, great British cookie that whatever that one is uh, with Paul Hollywood Paul Hollywood um I like um I love the amazing race um which is fun mostly because it feeds my traveling desire and sometimes they go places where I never would have thought that I wanted to go and I'm like ooh. I would actually, <laughs> I would enjoy going there. Um, I, I mean, at least from seeing them go there, <laughs> I think I would enjoy going there. Um, there was a show on Netflix that I watched last summer where they were doing, I think, is it Instant Hotel? Instant Hotel, I think. And they were, it was in Australia, which was fun because I want to go to Australia and it's people doing basically Airbnb or VRBO kind of setups and um, trying to see which, was the best setup. And what I enjoyed even more than just getting to see pieces of Australia, which was fun, um, was one of the hosts um, had been a host on Changing Rooms uh, on BBC America, well, the BBC in the early 80s. He'd been a designer on Changing Rooms um, or maybe early 90s. But anyway, I, so I remembered him from way back then when he used to like tiger stripe every all the walls. His walls were always insane. And now he was judging the decorations. So anyway, I like those sorts of things where you have to have a skill of some sort as opposed to just wanting to look cute on camera. <laughs> Yeah, I've watched Survivor. I've watched okay. that before, but I tend to I tend to get bored after a while. <laughs> I don't know. There's only so many crazy things you can do. <laughs> Maybe. I I've never made it through a season of Survivor. I've tried a couple times, but yeah, that one is which seems weird because everybody says it's the same as The Amazing Race, and I'm like, mm, not really. It's not. It's it's not. <laughs> but you have if you haven't watched both, you don't know for sure. True. True. So take my word for they're not the same. <laughs> they're not the same. All right. So um, I feel like um, 
maybe the reality TV show books were um, a bit more of a trend a few years ago as opposed to today. I don't know that I see as many of them coming out today. Um, what do you What do you think? Do you, are you still seeing these happening or um, not, Valerie? I didn't really look at the dates, I guess, um, <laughs> of the ones that I have recently read. And I recently read some because I knew we were going to be doing this episode, right? So um, I'm sure that at least one of them was from several years ago because uh, it's book one in a series <laughs> and they're all, they're all out. So um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's more more common from say five years ago than than it is from right now. Okay. Narelle, what do you think? Well, I've, there's a couple of ones that I've um, picked that are probably released in the last 12 months, okay. but they're not actually a reality TV show. So there's, I think a few years ago, I won't start jumping ahead and talking about books yet. Um, <laughs> it was more common to see a romance that was set in a reality TV world. Whereas now it's often what happens afterwards, if that makes sense. Sure. They've been on a reality TV show and done for a certain reason or done reality TV. And then the romance and the story is actually away from that setting. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I would agree with that. I, I can think of a couple that fit that, that definition a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, do you feel like these types of books need to be based around that bachelor, bachelorette setup? Or, um, you know, is there room for any sort of reality TV? Or, you know, maybe the better question is, do you, do you have a preference as to if it is based in the competition? What are you liking to see or looking to see? Um, what do you think, Valerie? Because we're talking about romance, a bachelor type show gives you an automatic hero and heroine sure. where other other um, types of shows you may, might not be quite as cut and dried on that although although why not but um yeah it, it can go either way but I, the ones that I found more of them seem to be based on that which has its own challenges yeah really yeah. um I think I, I find it hard to make a case myself for having one character who's um, living this type of uh, a, a life on purpose as a Christian, let alone two. So when you're looking at it from a, a Christian contemporary romance um, situation, then you've got your work cut out for you, dear author, uh, as to make that really, to make it really work. Whereas a, a like a I don't know a home renovation show or something is is much more neutral, yeah. in my personal opinion. Yep, Narelle. Well, this is probably going to sound weird, but I actually would prefer to read a book about a dating reality TV show than watch it because in a book it's fiction, mm -hmm. and I think I just. To have your personal life under surveillance 24-7 in terms of a romance in real life, to me, is just horrifying. I just can't imagine how difficult that would be. And um, I think people have very different motives for going on dating TV shows. Some people, it is about the money. That is an opportunity to, to get a certain result financially, and so they do that. And that may be because they've come from a desperate situation. Um, other people want to be actors and it's paid work so that gives they basically can play a role and survive that way but then I also think there are real people that can really have their lives messed up afterwards according to how the reality tv dating show portrays them um, in the tv in the actual show so people social media all the commentary around it all the magazine articles are the sort of the mini paparazzi drama of it all. And so I would rather see that in a book than know that it actually really happened to someone, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, so, it totally uh, makes sense. That totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I I feel like I see most of the Bachelor, Bachelorette setup kind of things. And I think because, yeah, it does give you that easy win kind of thing. Um, but I would love to see like, well, because I love the cooking shows, right? I'd love to see cooking competitors 
And then you've got sort of that built-in trope of uh, hate, you know, hate, I hate you effectively because I, you, we're both vying for this same prize. There can right. be only one. Um, you know, I, I would love to see that sort of set up um, or, or something along those lines. And I did like um, my book, I, I don't think anyone, it would be on anybody's list because it's such a minor part of the backstory. It's not even like A Heart Restored, my first Peacock Hill book, Deidre had been um, on a reality, basically, well, she, she did TV flipping show, which was sort of like reality TV because they did real life flipping and had this big fallout with her nefarious partner slash boyfriend. Um, and that was what pushed her to go to Peacock Hill in the first place was, you know, how the show sort of ruined her life. And that's such a teeny little piece of the plot that you could blink and miss it very easily. <laughs> um, I don't consider that book to qualify for this topic at all, but, but that like, I would watch a, I would read a house flipping book in a heartbeat. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> well I I read one so I can I can talk about that okay well, um yeah do it can, can I just jump in? <laughs> yeah it's jump in. by Grace Worthington and it's called Love at Wild Harbor okay so um Lily is the heroine and she finally has her fixer-upper on the beach that she has always wanted and she has a chocolate shop that she needs to keep open so she's just like <laughs> really kind of struggling and she has lots to prove to her dad who okay. recently had a stroke so then tv star alex briggs comes home to wild harbor where he had grown up um, to do a flip on the beach house that turns out to be right next door to lily's so they've been an item in high school so you kind of have that whole enemies vibe going on there mm -hmm. as well but he has never gotten over her. And of course, she's never gotten over him either. Because romance, hello. Um, he convinces Lily and he convinces his producers to do a double rental in an effort to make her dreams come true. So there is a lot of the, the reality TV stuff and, and his, his producer and manager and and the people that work for him are all in there and she's like yeah he's so full of himself look at him he made it big and here I am you know still here <laughs> and not doing so well just barely hanging on to this old house and barely hanging on to my chocolate shop and look at my dad he barely survived and it's all terrible and he's got his megawatt smile on for the camera right so I enjoyed that one because yeah it's a little bit different it wasn't a, a dating show um, story at all but uh, yeah it had the flipper aspect so that's cool and some fun stuff in the final chapters that you want to sounds know. fun <laughs> it was i will pick it that did. up that sounds really fun that really does Narelle, since we're in books let's just keep going because it's it can be book time i think we exhausted all the the lead up stuff what's your first book oh yes <laughs> my first book so um Shit, it's hard because I've, I've been talking about reality TV in previous episodes, so you'll probably recognise the books <laughs> I'm talking about. The first one I'll talk about is um, Uptown Heiress by Lindy Peterson, and that one opens in a in a hotel. So um, the heroine's dad is a hotel magnate, so he owns oh, this chain of hotels. Yes, and so she has to, she's contractually obliged to have to attend these parties every year. So she's attending one of the parties from when she was on the show and you get the typical catty women comparing each other and I didn't like her and look at what she's wearing and all that kind of stuff. And the hero in the story is a waiter and she ends up riding off, uh, taking off early on his motorbike from this um, mm. hotel and just, yes, and the romance goes from there. And he d doesn't know that she's wealthy and he has an issue with wealthy people for other reasons and it's just a really fun story but I think it really sort of gave an insight into that behind the scenes of everything might look all pretty and nice on the surface of these shows but you get behind the scenes and um, it's it's not that way at all and I think it was very very well written the way she, the, the relationships between the women who didn't get chosen basically who have to keep coming back to this part of their life. Yeah. and keep reliving the fact that they didn't get chosen <laughs> oh that sounds great fun it does, i haven't it? read that one but it's no. been a while might need to revisit it yeah that's yeah fun. 
Um, my first is actually Love Simplified by Terry J. Haynes. Um, and it is a dating show, but what I like about it is it's sort of a little twist on it. The heroine has developed, she's a psychologist and she's developed this, what she's trying to really launch this foolproof how to find a match who's actually going to be good with you and, and long-term um, process. And so in order to do that, she agrees to do this show with herself where she'll prove that her process for simplifying love, right, really works to find you long-term happiness. Um, so premise. Yeah, so it's at least a little different. It's it's not just, you know, who can wear the sexiest bikini of, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and and it's it's just super well written and it dives into some of those things like what should you really be looking for when you are looking for lasting love as opposed to ratings and that conflict then between this isn't giving us ratings because you guys are sitting there talking and getting to know each other and we need some we need some pizzazz and she's like but that's not what this is um and so it's it's really fun um it's a little older it's probably five to seven years old at this point but it's super super fun um, and I think it probably is the first reality TV based book that I ever read. And it just has stuck with me. So do you have a second one, Valerie? I do. I have a whole list, actually. Excellent. Interestingly, I, I could only think of one a few weeks ago. <laughs> so I, asked, I asked around and got some recommendations and far more recommendations, honestly, than I thought I was going to get. So I read several. Um, but the one that I could think of from the beginning was uh, by Krista Phillips. And this one is several years old as well. It's called The Engagement Plot. And it kind of reminds me of what you were saying before. It, it picks up six months after the reality show ends. So it's the fallout of it. And during the reality show, um, Hannah gave, she gave her heart to Will. Um, but it turns out that he just like took it and shattered it on television national television <laughs> and, and so she's she's run home and people still know that she was humiliated in this show and um and part of it was that she had been trying to be a good christian witness on the show and that was just made fun of so now six months later he's in her minnesota hometown begging her to consider a faith engagement to repair her reputation and his as well with his, the company he's CEO of. So because it's Krista Phillips, you know you're gonna be laughing um, all the way through yeah. and does not disappoint um, because it just goes from one mishap to another. Uh, so it's not so easy to repair either of their reputations, especially as they actually do fall in love with each other. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Narelle, what's your next one? Um, my next one is Regaining Mercy by Carolyn Miller, which I've talked about before. Mm -hmm. And this one is where she, she's a single mom. And so she went on this um, bachelor style, what was it called? Um, Love at First Glance is the show she went on. And um, she was competing for the guy. And she did it, she did it for the money. Like she really needed the money for various reasons. And she, I think she was very naive when she went onto the show. I think she thought, well, I'll do this. I'll get it. I'll get paid. I'll have a check to bank and it's all good. And ends up going back to her hometown. And the way that she was portrayed on the show just really reinforced a whole bunch of stereotypes that the town people had had about what her family was like and very much sort of a white trash type thing going, which is an awful thing to say, but that's what it, that's what it was like and the opening scene of the book is she's working as a cashier in a grocery store and this church lady is just so mean to her and so horrible to her um, because she's got this very clear idea about 
um, what I'm trying to think of the, Mindy's like. Like she just thinks has, and then the TV show has just sort of magnified this idea of the type of person that Mindy is. So um, this is a lovely romance and the hero is just adorable in this book. Um, but I think it really brings out the damage, the reputational damage that can happen after these shows. Um, yeah, what happens afterwards? Like you talked about for the engagement plot with Chris as well. Yeah, yeah. it sounds yeah. like there's a similar type of fallout there where, they just can't live it down right away. People don't forget yeah. Yeah. immediately. And it's that small town thing as well. Yeah. Partly people remember and there's just all this finger shaking about how could you or else. Yeah. Um, I knew that's what you were like all along. Yeah. 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 And she was um she actually learned how to do social media through doing this. And so that actually became quite useful because she ends up picking up a job where she uses some of those skills that she gained from doing the TV show, some of the Good marketing now that she picked <laughs> up. So there's always an upside. <laughs> Not a, there's a silver lining to everything. So even though it was a tough experience to go through, it actually was it was character building for her in that particular story. Excellent. Interesting. So I is oh. that one of the Independence Islands books? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's her. That's Karen. Yeah, it's the first one. The one with the blue cover. All right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So my next one is going to be Billionaire Love Match by Emma St. Clair. Um, and it is a matchmaking show that was supposed to be scripted. Um, but Casey really works hard to get on the show because she needs the money um desperately <laughs> and the hero uh, who is the producer's son um doesn't really want to do the show but got talked into it by his mother and sh his mother is assuring him no no it's all pretend you just need to do this for me because our production company you know our family livelihood production company depends on it um so, but he actually ends up, obviously they end up falling for each other, um, despite the fact that the showrunners are trying to not have case, like they've already chosen the winner um, and they're trying to get him set up with the, the actress that they hired to be the winner. This is kind of spoilery, but it's an older book. So, um, <laughs> and, and so despite those, you know, machinations, they still end up falling for each other. Um, but then when all is revealed, of course, it's like, well, what was real? Um, and I think I like the reality books, reality-based books that explore the, you know, there has to be that sense, I think, in anyone who participates in these things, what was real and what wasn't, what was the show? And what, what is actually genuine? Is there anything genuine when the cameras are off? I read that one recently too. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that amused me throughout <laughs> it was that um, he, the very first time he's tapping a code onto her wrist while they're just sitting there on camera getting to know each other. And she's like, what is this? What is this? What is this? And then she figures it out that it's Morse code. So she s settles down and, and, you know, learns Morse code instantly because, because it's a book. It's because a book. It's fiction. <laughs> and so they use this to communicate the whole time. Yeah. Even when they're on camera, they're just tapping on each other's knee or whatever. And, um, you know, and so he's saying one thing and he's tapping on her leg that it's a lie you know like this sort of thing all the way through so I, I don't know how realistic that is to me it didn't feel very realistic but it's Emma St. Clair yeah she writes a lot of rom-com and um, it was just an amusing sideline to me as they're like communicating on these two different levels all yes. the way through it. yeah I did like that, that. yeah and that I've read articles fun. yeah sorry no you go Beth oh I was just um, it, was read... fun, it was a fun addition <laughs> yeah, I've I've read articles where um, contestants have like sort of planned out whether they're going to stay or go and all this kind of thing. And there was one couple on one of these dating shows where they had agreed that they were going to stay married and then she reneged on him and dumped him. 
So it was all planned out and okay. she turned the screws on him. And, and, uh, and that really, really messed him up after the show and created a lot of heartache and the whole country turned against him who watched the show. And so I think that storyline is actually quite realistic that there's a lot of communication beneath the surface that mm -hmm. is not picked up on the camera as these two people are trying to navigate how do I do this relationship in front of a camera without looking like a complete idiot and yeah. not and how do I protect my reputation my integrity my heart in the process yes yeah, yeah. They're very very tricky stuff uh, I yeah it, seems like it would be hard to write a story like this in a short length yeah because there's so much going on yeah I think we have time to do a third. Pick Good. Your third. Pick your third, <laughs> I've got another one. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Evangeline yeah. Kelly, um, Blind Date with a Billionaire Reality Star. I bet you can't guess what kind of book that is. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so as the book opens, um, Carly is the guardian of her two teenage siblings. She loses her job um, as a waitress for sticking up for a fellow waitress who's being sexually harassed. Mm. So here she is, a young adult with two kids dependent on her, and she just lost her job. And somebody says, hey, you can get money by trying out for this show, and they pay you by the episode. And she's like, okay, well, I might as well try because I can't find a job. She tries for a few days, but I mean, she needs rent money by the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. So she'll be paid for an episode or two and then, you know, she'll be cut and that'll be fine. That'll see her through the next few weeks while she looks for a real job. So, of course, uh, so we're all all sympathetic with Carly right from the beginning, right? She has our heart because of the sticking up for her friend thing. And, and um, so anyways, so Drake, sadly, is the typical spoiled rich boy that many of these books or shows or both tend to revolve <laughs> around um so he's just the bored guy who you expect him to be at first um but carly shocks him by being not what he expects and so he, it's kind of like he sits up and takes notice and realizes that there's more to life and that there are people who don't have his posh little existence so it was kind of fun as well i, I enjoyed it more than i thought i would <laughs> It's true because I wasn't yeah. going into reading these books going, oh, this is going to be my new favorite subgenre. Yeah. Um, but I was curious to see what other authors were doing um, because we were going to talk about it here. And uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy um, that one as well. Cool. Narelle? I'm going to quickly talk about two. I know you said one, <laughs> but I can't decide. So um, I have talked about these books before, so I can do it quickly. So the um, first one is Unkissable by J.C. Weaver, which was the fairy tale um, retelling of the Frog Prince. And that one I really liked because that was where her life, her dad had died and she was living with her stepmother. I think it was her half-sister, mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly, but she was basically forced in, by her family circumstances to be in this reality TV show. She'd been a, a, a child teenage actor prior to that and that was the only world she knew and she runs away from that world and ends up in Ari in New Mexico, sorry, not Arizona. Um, but the I think the setup for that was really, really interesting and she becomes a Christian during the story and I really enjoyed that one. And the other one I'm going to talk about, which I mentioned before, is an older book, The Wedding Game by Amy Mateo. And that's one like the one that Valerie mentioned where they would, had set up who was meant to win and she wasn't meant to win. She'd gone on there because she was desperate for money and the guy who's the like the, the, the guy they're all vying for, he is meant to choose this other person. He's the son of the producer, I think, of the show. And on a whim, he chooses the he chooses the other one and she gets the viewer's choice vote. And so they now have to live together. I think it was six months, three months, six months, can't remember, a length of time in an apartment in LA with cameras on them all the time. Oh, and so that was very much the what happens behind the scenes when you have 24 seven camera people watching everything you do. So um, that was probably one of the first reality TV show um, books I read and I really enjoyed the story. It was a fun one. I think Amy Mateo wrote a series. I think there was a couple that, I think she had a series um, of reality TV shows or game shows. 
but don't quote me on that. <laughs> I just remember. I just remember there was more like it. Okay. Um, right. The wedding games one I remember. Okay. Cool. Yes. Cool. All right. My last one is um, All Made Up by Kara Isaac. And um, that's another, it's, it's falling for the farmer, I think is the TV show and the farmer yeah. is the hero and he actually goes on just because he needs the prize money to save his farm, um, which is struggling massively. And I feel like it's been a long time since I've read this one, but I feel like he has ill parents who need additional care as well some there's there are big reasons big good reasons for him to do this show and he sort of sees it as his last chance and um Katrina or Catriona I would say Katrina but maybe in Australia you say Catriona um (laughs) uh is a makeup artist and um she's just supposed to do the makeup but they have a girl who drops out for whatever reason right at and they're like you'll do just you know a couple episodes and then we'll we promise you'll get out but then it turns out that this is like the love of her life who broke up with her because she has this jet setting makeup artist lifestyle and he is a farmer and he is just in love with being a farmer um so it's it's a second chance and it's a little bit of I hate you not as much because I mean they parted badly but but they both still very obviously yearn for the other um and it's it's really quite good um it is not my favorite Kara Isaac book but it is a good Kara Isaac book (laughs) I remember enjoying that one as well I'd forgotten it though until you mentioned it so um... it was on my list (laughs) But I figured you'd mention it because yep. it was Kara Isaac, so I could cross it off my list. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. That was way too long. Yeah. <laughs> so we probably, we're at like about a half an hour. So there are more. Um, we probably missed some. If you have a favorite that we missed, please let us know in the comments. Um, I don't hate this subgenre, but I don't usually actively seek it out. If an author I love writes it, I'll read it. Um, but I don't, I don't often look for it. Is that about where you guys find yourselves generally? That's where I was until we decided to do this episode. And then I was like, okay, let me read them all. And we went, we went camping recently and I read three back to back. Oh, nice. So, um, so I guess I did seek them out. You sure did. Um, but I might not again yep. for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a little break. And as Very I said good. before, as long as it's a disaster, it all works for me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and if it's a good book, there's got to be disaster in it. Yes, <laughs> that is for sure. For sure. So please leave us a comment either on our YouTube channel or over on our Facebook page for Story Chats and let us know what you thought. If we missed one, um, if you agree with our picks. Maybe if you have a reality TV show that you just think we're missing out on because we don't watch it, let us know that too. That's fine. Valerie won't watch it, but I might give it a try. Um, (laughs) So thank you for joining us at Story Chats. Um, Go ahead and make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube. I lost my train of thought there for a second. I almost covered it, but not quite. You can find all the information you need about the podcast at inspiromance.com slash story chats. And in the meantime, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week, but don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>